Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. So, given how quickly the iPad Air 4 sold out and how the delivery date was pushed quite a lot, I can only imagine how popular this really is. And why not, right, when it borrows all the best features of that more expensive iPad Pro, but the cost still remains at the mid-tier level. Sort of. So here are a few tips and tricks that will help you to get the most out of your shiny new colorful iPad Air 4. Some of these are common to other iPads as well, but the point of this video is try to show you a few tips which will help you get the maximum out of your iPad Air 4. First, let's look at something which is quite unique to the Air 4, the power button touch ID. For the first time, we have the touch ID in this tiny power button strip. Even though it's on a small surface, it does work perfectly fine. Now, Apple only allows you to store up to five fingerprints, but you can cheat a bit here. When you're registering for your fingerprint, you can actually use more than one finger to complete the fingerprint scan. I've seen people using all their five fingers, but I think two will be a better choice and will work more accurately. So for this scan, I'm going to use my index finger and my thumb finger as I use these the most to unlock my iPad. You just need to make sure that in between each scans, the main surface area of your fingers are covered. And then the same with the edges. And voila, now both your fingers work and you can just unlock your iPad Air without any issues by using either of this finger. So you can use the same method and register more than one fingers on each scan. Next, I have viewers asking if the Touch ID is a physical button. Unfortunately, it is. So it is not like the glass haptic feedback extension which Apple used on their iPhones. It is a physical button. And we all know that the more we press, the quicker it gets worn out. Thankfully, you don't have to press that button that much. Actually, you don't even have to press it at all. Let me explain how. The iPad Air 4, same as the iPad Pro, has got this feature called Tap to Wake. So you just tap the screen to wake it, and then you just rest your finger on the Touch ID button. Don't press it, just rest it, and the screen unlocks. It's really that simple. And you don't have to press the Touch ID button again to lock your device. In order to do that, you need to have a case which supports the sleep-wake option. Actually, at this point, every other case does support this feature. So just use one and closing the flap will just lock your iPad. So see, you really don't have to press that power button at all for daily usage. Now, for the things which you need to press the power button is how do you restart your iPad and how do you force restart your iPad? Now, without the home button, this is slightly tricky, guys, as you have to time it correctly. Now, just to get that restart option, all you have to do is press the volume button and the power button and hold them. But you need to time this correctly. Otherwise, you'll just get the volume increase or decrease option and then you'll invoke Siri. So if you just time it right, then you'd get that option. And as soon as you get the option, you can let go and then slide to power off. Now, force restart is another combination of buttons. So you have to press and let go the volume up button first, then the volume down button quickly, and then tap and hold the power button. And you just need to keep holding the power button until the screen switches off and you see the Apple logo. So that's how you restart or force restart your iPad Air 4. Next is multitasking to the max. This again is common for all iPads running iPad OS, but it's cool to include in this list so you can use the full potential of your iPad. You can open four apps at one time via multitasking. And you can even open the same version of the app if needed. Let me show you how. First, start a movie in any of the supported apps. I'm using Apple TV here, guys, but Netflix and Amazon, they all support this feature. 
So I'm using Apple TV to play a movie here and whilst playing, exit the app by swiping up, which will still play the movie in the small hovering window. Then open an app. I'm opening Safari here and then I'll open another Safari instance to show you how to open the same instance of the app more than once. And then just drag and drop it into the side so it splits the other Safari browser exactly in half, keeping both these instances side by side. And then I want to open the Files app and slide it over on top like this. And there you go, four windows at once. I don't know if you can work like this. If you can, then you really are a genius. But for me, the most I do is two apps side by side along with video or music playing in the background. Next is another thing which would save you from pressing those buttons again, physical buttons, leading to less wear and tear. And this is to do with screenshots. Generally, to take a screenshot, you again press both the power and the volume button at once and this takes a screenshot. But there is another way to take a screenshot and for this, you need the Apple Pencil. See, the Apple Pencil Gen 2 is an amazing stylus device and it will seriously help not only with pro apps like LumaFusion and Lightroom, but also for note taking if you are a student. So it's really a solid addition to your iPad Air 4. There are a few cool things which you can do with the stylus. First is screenshots. To take a screenshot, you just point the pencil to the corner and drag it into the midpoint of the screen and that takes a screenshot. Pretty easy here, just like that and it takes a screenshot. Staying on the Apple Pencil, here's another useful tip. You can set it so that just tapping with your Apple Pencil on the lock screen will open Notes app right away. This is super useful if you want to quickly start taking notes, maybe in a lecture or a college, and you don't have to go through the whole process of unlocking the device and then opening the Notes app to start doing so. In order to set this up, you need to go to Settings and then to Notes app and then Turn the option which says access notes from lock screen to on. You can also set it to create a new note or resume the last one. It's really a very useful setting. Next, the control center. The control center gives you quick access to settings like brightness, enable silent mode, orientation, lock, etc. just by swiping from the right hand corner of your screen. But you can make this menu even more useful by adding a few more useful shortcuts which are turned off by default. In order to do that, go back to settings and then to control center and here you have various things to choose from. The few I find extremely useful are number one, the dark mode. I know you can set the dark mode to turn on automatically based on the time of the day but having manual control is useful especially if you're working in a dark room and don't want to be blinded by that brightness. Next is screen recorder. Super useful stuff again. Having it right in there in the control center makes it easy to access. And then the few other useful ones are QR code recognition, voice memos and Apple TV remote if you use Apple TV. Finally, it's the files app. Now, all those who are looking to use your iPad as a laptop replacement, then the way Apple opened up the Files app with iPad OS will seriously help. As now, this Files app more or less behaves like the file management on a desktop class operating system. First, you can download files onto it. So, if you want to save an image or an MP3 file, now you have the option to save it to the Files app. Take MP3 for instance from bensound.com. They're not sponsoring this video, but it's seriously amazing collection of background music, which are royalty free. And I simply love their website. Just click download and the MP3 file saves directly to your files app. You can also set the default location for downloads by going into settings, Safari, and then downloads. And then you choose the location where the files need to be saved. And just like Windows or Mac OS, you get to rename the file. It seriously helps guys if you want to save pictures and find them easily later. All you have to do is tap and hold the file until you get the contextual menu and choose rename. 
And once you have done that and saved, you can search for that file from anywhere within the files app. And then you can select multiple files and choose to compress or zip those. You can also create duplicates of them. Or move them to a different location. And share them via email or messages. You can also view them in either list mode or icons mode, reorder them based on date, size, etc. And via multitasking, you can open any other app to the side and use drag and drop to share files. You can also open the same instance of the files app side by side and drag files from one folder to other. So very useful features on the files app and it seriously helps for all those who are planning to use their new iPad Air 4 as a laptop replacement. So that's it guys. Those are the few tricks and tips which I found very useful on the iPad Air 4 and it certainly helps if you are planning to use your iPad as your main computer. Hope you liked the video guys. If you did, please hit that like button and please do subscribe and show your support and I will continue making fun and informative videos for you guys. So that's all for now. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.